you to the organizers for uh, inviting me here today. It's great, great to be here. So the uh, topic of my uh, talk today is high quality professional development for teachers. So I will be focusing in particular on in-service teacher education rather than pre-service. Uh, تدريب المعلمين أثناء الخدمة من أجل تعليم أو تطوير مهني عالي الجودة بالنسبة للمعلمين. And uh, if you'd like to get a copy of the um, presentation, it's available at that address, and you'll also find there a list of uh, references um, which I'll use during the talk. طبعا هناك بعض المراجع التي اعتمدت عليها في هذا البحث وسيتم عرضها وهذا هو موقعي الالكتروني ترونه امامكم the, the other point to make is I'm not talking about a, a particular country but I'll be drawing on my experience of professional development in different contexts around the world سوف لن اركز على دول بعينها وانما سأركز على التطوير المهني في سياقات مختلفة حول العالم. Okay, so let's start with a point I think we, we all agree on. It's uh, increasingly noted around the world that um, teachers play a very important part in determining uh, the quality of education uh, that students receive. Uh, دعونا uh, نركز على المفهوم الذي نتفق عليه جميعا حيث أن المعلم هو محور العملية التعليمية لذلك هناك اعتماد كبير جدا على جودة مهنة المعلم. And this is why both pre-service and in-service teacher education are so vitally important. هذا هو السبب الذي يجعل تدريب المعلمين أثناء الخدمة ذو أهمية قصوى. However, there are problems with um, in-service teacher education around the world, and I'll just read this quote for you. Um, it says that the literature on professional development is filled with descriptions of past failures. Uh, هناك أدبيات كثيرة حول التطوير المهني للمعلمين. وهناك التركيز هو على الإخفاق الإخفاقات الكثيرة في الماضي. And reviews of modern professional development programs are often just as pessimistic. أما المراجعات الخاصة بالتطوير المهني في العصر الحديث لتطوير المهني لهذه أو لبرامج التطوير المهني في العصر الحديث. غالبا ما تكون متشائمة أو ذات نظرة متشائمة. Now this quote, as you as you will see, was um, written in in the year 2000. Uh, I'll just give you a more recent quote uh, from a teacher that makes the same point. هذا الاقتباس تم في 2000 سنة 2000 ولكن سأعطيكم اقتباس أخذ حديثا من أحد المعلمين. So here's a teacher, this is a teacher in China, talking about their experience, their recent experience of attending uh, an in-service professional development program. So this is what the teacher said. They said, I participated in two in-service training programs. I think they are useless for my teaching. And the teacher also said each course lasted only one week with all the teachers sitting in one large class classroom and listening to the lecturers 
talking about theories. نحن جلسنا في قاعة نستمع إلى محاضر أو محاضرين يتحدثون عن نظريات. Their theories sounded profound, the teacher said, but most of the audience did not understand them. يبدو أن هذه النظريات نظريات عميقة وجيدة لكن الحضور لم يفهموا هذه النظريات. And I don't think this is an unusual experience. My, my experience in different contexts around the world suggests that this is the way that teachers very often still do experience um, in-service training. لا أعتقد أن هذه التجربة فريدة من نوعها وعلى حسب خبرتي واجهت عدد من هذه الآراء وكلها تتفق على شيء. Uh, so we, we have a paradox. We have a paradox. On the one hand, we all acknowledge that professional development is important for teachers. No one disagrees with that. On the other, there's plenty of evidence that the way professional development is done is very often ineffective. Uh, أطراف هذا التناقض يقول أن التطوير المهني أمر مهم ولكن الجانب الآخر من التناقض يقول أن الطريقة التي يتم بها هذا التطوير المهني غير مجدية. So what I'd like to do now in, in the talk is first of all consider why professional development very often is, if, is ineffective and then to consider uh, some alternatives. إذا سننظر في الشريحة التالية عن أسباب التي الأسباب التي تجعل التطوير المهني غير فعال وكيفية معالجة هذا الأمر. So let's start looking at why the, the typical approach to professional development I think around the world today is not particularly um, effective. What are some of the barriers um, that interfere with effective professional learning for teachers. سنتحدث عن الأسباب التي تجعل هذا التطوير المهني غير فعال على مستوى العالم. So one way of summarizing the a key problem with the way we approach professional development today is that it still relies very much on a, a transmission model of learning and I'll explain what that is now. يعود أحد الأسباب إلى نموذج التلقين وسأعرض عليكم ما هو المقصود أو ماذا نقصد بنموذج التلقين. And I'd like to highlight um, some features of this transmission model. I'll list them and then I'll talk about each in turn. Uh, سأتحدث عن هذا النموذج ولكن هنالك جوانب أخرى سأتحدث عنها. Okay, so first of all, uh, a in a transmission model to professional development, uh, decisions are externally defined. Uh, the approach taken to, uh, to teaching is input-based. The training or the professional development tends to be short term. And the professional development is, is too often, unfortunately, disconnected from classroom practice. So let me say a few words about each of these now. Okay. So the first problem I mentioned is that control in conventional approaches to professional development is very often completely external, completely external. Uh, and that means that decisions about 
what teachers learn, how they learn it, when they learn it, are all made by someone other than the teacher. هذا يعني أن التعليم وتدريب المعلم والقرارات التي يتخذها كل هذه الأشياء يقوم بها شخص غير المعلمين. And in a, in a recent review of, of literature on professional development, this was identified as one uh, common barrier to learning, as you can see in the quote here. And so I'll read the quote. It says that the need to know something new is identified by someone external to the group of teachers. أي أن الحاجة لتعلم شيء جديد يحددها شخص خارج عن خارج مجموعة المعلمين. And that very often means that the teachers do not see the content as relevant to their needs. هذا يدل على أن أو يشير إلى أن المعلمون يجدون أن المحتوى لا يلبي احتياجاتهم. And this, of course, has a negative effect on teachers' motivation to engage with the professional development. هذا طبعا من من آثاره أن المعلم سيكون له نظرة سلبية تجاه التطوير المهني. Okay, so that's that's the first problem with um, common approaches to professional development. وهذه أول مشكلة بالنسبة للتطوير المهني. The second uh, problem I mentioned earlier is that professional development very often is input-based in its approach, and now I'll explain what that means. النقطة الثانية والجانب الثاني هو نظام الاعتماد على أو نظام يعتمد على المدخلات وسأشرح ما أقصد بذلك. So in an input-based approach to um, professional development. هذا ما هو المقصود بنظام المدخلات؟ The focus is on received knowledge. The focus is on giving teachers knowledge that comes from external sources such as theory and research. الجانب الأول هو نظام استقبال المعلومات أو المعارف حيث يتم تزويد المعلم بهذه المعلومات والمعارف من مصادر خارجية. And I'm not suggesting that that kind of knowledge is not useful for teachers, but there are other kinds of knowledge that teachers can benefit from as well. أنا لا أقول أن المعلمون لا يستفيدون من هذا الجانب، لكن ما أريد أن أقوله أن هنالك مصادر أخرى يمكن أن تكون مفيدة للمعلمين. A second, a second feature of an input-based approach is that the knowledge teachers need is seen to reside in an expert trainer. The, the trainer is the person who has the knowledge and the authority. الجانب الآخر هو المدرب الخبير حيث أن هذا المدرب الخبير هو الذي يحوز تلك المعرفة وبالتالي ينقلها الى المعلمين. A third feature, if we, if we ask the question, how do teachers acquire the knowledge, how do teachers learn, the answer to that question in a, in a transmission model is they acquire knowledge through knowledge transmission from the trainer to the teachers. نظام التلقين كما ذكرناه ونظام نقل المعلومات يتم من خلال نقل المعلومات من المدرب إلى المعلم. Another question we can ask about professional development is how are teachers viewed? And again, in, in conventional approaches to professional development, teachers are viewed as empty vessels. They are treated as if they do not have, already have, valuable knowledge um, and experience. الجانب الآخر في هذا النموذج أنه ينظر إلى المعلمين كأوعية فارغة وليست لديهم معلومات وإنما 
هم هنالك ليتم تعبئتهم بهذه المعلومات والمعارف. And this is clearly problematic because in in-service contexts, teachers always bring with them plenty of experience, knowledge, and beliefs already. وهذا طبعا جانب سلبي لأنه المعلمون يجلبون معهم خبرتهم ومعارفهم التي ينبغي الاستفادة منها. What teachers bring with them to in-service um, in service training context is a valuable resource which is very often um, ignored. And Okay, one final characteristic of an input-based approach to professional development is that it assumes that theory determines practice. آخر سمة من سمات هذا النموذج لتطوير المهني أن النظرية هي التي تحدد كيفية التطبيق. So the assumption is that if teachers are given new knowledge, new theories, new research, that will automatically lead to changes in what teachers do in the classroom. هذا يعني أن هنالك نظريات تدخل ويتم تطبيقها بشكل آلي على قاعة الدرس. But we know that in reality that's not the way um, it works. ونحن نعرف أن في الواقع الأمر أن هذه ليست الطريقة المثلى للنجاح. Okay, so a third problem um, with con conventional approaches to professional development is they tend to be very short term. Typically, we have one one-off workshops, what is sometimes called a hit and run approach to professional development. هناك ورش عمل تكون لمرة واحدة فقط. And we know that one-off workshops do not lead to significant change in what teachers do in the classroom. ونحن نعلم جيدا أن ورشة واحدة لا تكفي لإحداث تغيير ذا معنى أو ذا جدوى في تطوير المهني. A short-term approach to professional development also treats professional learning as an event. Rather than a process. بالنسبة للجانب الآخر أنه يتع يتم التعامل مع التطوير المهني باعتباره حدثا وليس عملية متواصلة. And there is research evidence that the number of hours that teachers spend on professional development correlates or is positively associated. With the changes that take place in their teaching, so more time um, equals more changes. هذا يدل على أن الوقت المحدد يرتبط بالأثر على تطوير المهني للمعلم. The last problem with uh, conventional approaches to professional development, as I said, is that they are very often disconnected from what happens in classrooms. ما الجانب الآخر الذي نشير إليه عدم الصلة بين ما بين التطوير المهني وما يتم داخل قاعة الدرس. And I can explain this using two pictures, pictures of two houses. ممكن أشرح هذا الأمر بشكل واضح بأنه في شكل بيتين منفصلين ليس هنالك أي صلة أو ما يربطهما ببعض. So let's imagine one house is where teachers live. Where do teachers live? They live in classrooms. That's where they carry out their professional activities on a daily basis. But when it's time for professional development, teachers seem to move into another building. Very often, they, the professional development requires teachers to go somewhere else physically as well, not their schools. 
وهذا الانفصام يدل على أنه عندما يأتي الأمر للتطوير المهني على المعلم أن ينتقل من هذا المنزل إلى منزل آخر أو إلى مكان آخر يتم فيه هذا التطوير المهني